Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Farthing and my Fulbright research topic will be focused on implementation strategies for distributed solar in Chile. My advisor for this work will be Dr. Enzo Soma Santis of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile right here in Santiago. Uh, so just a brief outline, I'm going to introduce myself, which I've um, already done, but I'll do it again, um, and Dr. Selma, and give a bit of background for this research, as well as my um, selected, my project goals, intended approach, and outcomes. So I, in May 2017, I graduated from Clemson in South Carolina with a degree in industrial engineering. And since that time, I've been working at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado, working on uh, looking at research questions focused around how and when buildings use energy in relation to, uh, specifically in relation to renewable energy production. Uh, here, like I mentioned, I'll be working at Pontificia Universidad Católica with Dr. Soma, who is a professor in the Industrial and Systems Engineering Department and the director of the Energy Research Center there. So the really big picture background for my project, which I'm sure is very familiar to all of you in this room, is uh, this historical trend in carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, carbon dioxide uh, constitutes about 76% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and so this is obviously an issue with change, uh, influencing a changing climate, which can have devastating environmental and humanitarian issues that a lot of you are touching upon in some way in your projects. So, um, And so uh, electricity and heat production accounts for about 30, 31% of the uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. So finding alternative fossil free ways to produce the electricity and heat is the um, big picture motivation for this work that I intend to do. And so where does Chile fall in that landscape? Um, the, this is a chart of the total primary uh, energy source uh, energy supply, sorry, in Chile, so that includes imports as well. Um, about over 73% of the total primary energy supply in Chile is from fossil fuels, and so if you include biofuels and waste, that leaves about 20, 27% uh, from renewable sources. And I'm specifically going to be focusing on this solar energy proportion, which is under 1% of the total primary <coughs> energy supply. Um, so it's just under 1%. However, as you can see here, the solar resource in Chile is very strong, uh, particularly in the north. This is um, obviously on its side. So up in the north in the Atacama Desert, there's extremely high solar resource. It's one of the driest, most sunny places on the planet. Um, and uh, for comparison, in South Carolina, where I'm from, the uh, global horizontal irradiance, which is shown here, is about 1,600. Um, kilowatt hours per meter square annually, which is about the same as uh, this region down here. So uh, so very sunny here in Chile, and a lot of the solar developments that have taken place so far have been these larger scale developments up in the north where there's the most sun, which is fantastic, but um, can be constrained by the transmission infrastructure. This, uh, this issue has been addressed to some extent by the connection of the two um, transmission systems in Chile, but uh, the transmission infrastructure can still be a bottleneck or um, result in line losses when you have to transport the electricity so far to the majority of the population which lives here in Santiago. So exploring different ways uh, to produce solar energy in these smaller, more distributed uh, systems is of interest both in Chile and in the U.S. and globally. So the specific form of distributed solar that I'll be looking at is called community solar. So community solar is a development model in which multiple customers can subscribe or purchase or rent portions of a, of a system. So you can imagine if you lived in an apartment building, you didn't have a roof space specifically of your own, and you wouldn't be able to purchase traditional residential solar for your roof. You could, um, you could rent a portion of a solar system that's on your apartment building's roof or a neighboring building or a, um, an open land space nearby. Um, and so this overcomes a number of issues uh, specifically related to being able to produce the upfront financing for a solar project. 
uh, usually only uh, affluent people who um, can afford to put that money up front participate in residential solar. Um, and if and these projects are usually financed by either a utility or th some type of third party developer um, who which allows for more flexibility in the siting of the projects and one potential benefit of community solar is being able to site these projects in places that are e um, either beneficial for the distribution system or not um, or not detrimental um, and so my motivating question is can this community solar development model contribute to sustainable affordable renewable energy development in chile and hopefully gain some lessons that can be applicable in the u.s as well my project goals are to first assess the viability of community solar to provide electricity for residents here in the Santiago metropolitan area, and then to, within a local municipality, propose a specific community solar project and identify priority sites based on a number of factors such as likelihood of community participation. Uh, this type of, of renewable energy development is um, more heavily um, dependent upon community participation than many other uh, forms of, of energy. Um, grid benefit and then financial and physical feasibility. So my approach. As I do not claim to be an expert in this field, I am going to start with an extensive um, landscaping study and review existing literature. I know there's been at least one community solar project already implemented in the Santiago area, so I'll be looking into that. Um, looking at what type of data sets exist, a lot of these types of analysis depend on what kind of data you have access to and you can use. Um, as well as what tools I may be able to use to analyze distributed energy resources um, in, in Santiago. A major part of this project is going to be interviews to identify main barriers to these developments, and so I'm planning to look at this um, to do interviews with solar developers and um, energy experts and um, uh, to assess from their point of view what are the uh, main barriers and um, that must be overcome to to develop out these smaller scale distributed solar projects in an urban environment such as this and then also with uh, with homeowners and uh, utility rate payers to see what might motivate someone to participate in one of these projects to say yes I would like to pay this monthly fee to get my energy from solar um, a lot of that's going to depend on what the financial um, what the return on investment would be for them. So looking into the electricity markets and the financing mechanisms for these projects will be uh, will be important. Uh, next, depending on data available, I plan to conduct a spatial analysis to see in a specific area um, where a community solar project could be implemented. So this will depend on socioeconomic data, um, physical feasibility, what roof space is available or land space, um, good impacts, and if possible, um, looking at the existing loads in the area, um, as in when buildings or when people are using energy. Um, one, this might be getting too far into the weeds, but one uh, potential benefit of distributed scale solar is that if you can directly consume the solar energy before um, before it's fed back into the grid, there can be added benefits there. Um, and then finally, selecting a, a potential sites and proposing the broad scale parameters of this project, as in how big the project could be, who could participate, how many participants there might be. Um, and then uh, one potential option would be to propose this project to Comuna Energetica, which is a Ministry of Energy program that um, does work in the energy efficiency and renewable energy field. Uh, my intended outcomes for this project are to develop somewhat of an analytical framework for this newly emerging type of distributed energy in Chile, um, to uh, be able to analyze the, er, and prioritize these projects, um, to document the main barriers specific to community solar through the interviews and through my, uh, my literature review, and to develop uh, material for public understanding of what these systems are. So something that could be given to anyone on the street who's not an energy expert to help them understand what community solar is and what the um, benefits for them personally might be. 
um, and then more broadly to make um, some steps towards increased renewable energy integration. Um, and that is my project. Thank you. How large are the communities usually that these go into? Um, it can really depend. I think these systems can be a, anywhere from like 200 kilowatts to half. A megawatt or half a megawatt, um, which so they have some in Col they actually have a lot of community solar projects in Colorado, and usually it would be like um, maybe a few apartment complexes, um, but not everyone in those apartment complexes would be buying in. Um, some like really small towns have these plots, and maybe like a hundred or anywhere between like twenty and a hundred people could by a portion, but it's all really dependent on how many pieces you break it up into and um, how much available s space and capacity you have in your in the system. To follow up, how expensive are the, I mean, I know it probably depends on the size, but like on average, how expensive is it to construct one of these, like in total? Oh, uh, gosh. To, uh, to like physically construct the solar panels and put, like how much would it I, I know it depends on like I guess the number of people and the size of the project, but mm -hmm. like, how much would it cost, you know, for you know two hundred people or something to to have one of these? So, I I don't think I know the co exact cost that you're looking for, but in general, it would be like a a utility or third company doing like paying for the actual installation, uh -huh. and then people would pay just like a monthly um, uh -huh. a monthly bill to participate and then they would get reimbursed. There are many different ways that these work, but one way is they would get reimbursed on their energy bill each month for the amount of solar um, that they have purchased. So, um, yeah, I was just like curious if they actually owned it. Yeah. But, uh, the point is that uh, this is expensive investment. Yeah. So if you, for example, want to satisfy some five houses in a block or uh, maybe you need to spend like ten thousand dollars in investment uh, and so so there is economy of scale yeah. so the, the good thing is that distributed energy in Europe or, or state have been relevant a lot due to this community energy they, 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 they arrange that they are going to uh, afford the, the investment so, so it's, it's cheaper or, or over the time. The point is in Chile that doesn't happen yeah. and uh, for several reasons. So, so that, that's, that's the idea. The, the, the highest cost is investment and, and this is a great way to, to reduce that. So mostly it's owned by the, that was really I guess what I'm asking is who owns it and at the heart of it it would be owned by the utility company or whoever, not necessarily the people. Well, we don't have community energy here, so it's, we yeah. need to create a model to that. Mm -hmm. The point is that it doesn't work because right now here, distribution company is the owner of everything. Yeah. Uh, in other countries, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if you create a model in which the owners are people, in Chile, we have some, well, we need a social scientist working on this also <laughs> because um, there is, I think that in general, Chilean people don't trust on their neighbor, yeah. so <laughs> it's not that difficult to sound that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, first of all, this is so interesting, and I'm really excited to see what your final product, uh, product is. Um, a more like big picture question, what is the geographic distribution of different renewable energy potential like in Chile, like for wind and geothermal? Mm -hmm. um, is potential for that mostly overlaid with where mm -hmm. solar potential is highest, or um, is it more distributed, say, like in the south, mm -hmm. and there are other options for solar? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know what the wind resource is like, actually. I haven't looked into that. Um, and I would just postulate that the um, hydro resource is not aligned with the solar, just because solar is strongest in the north where there's almost no water. Um, and uh, I know Chile has a, a significant amount of hydropower that has been somewhat controversial, um, probably more than somewhat. Uh, and I'm, I 
believe that those are more from about midway down the country south where uh, there's more flowing water. Um, and then the other type of renewable was the um, bio... Oh, okay. We're not going to click back to that. Okay, <laughs> Uh, biofuels and waste, and I'm also not sure of the geographical distribution, but I'm guessing that's where the people are. Yeah. Yes. First of all, thank you so much. This is really great stuff, Amanda. Um, I mentioned before that my research is also in the energy space. Yes. Um, and I'm also working at uh, La Católica. Okay. So I think actually, Professor Santis, you probably know my advisor, Daniel Olivares, Quero. Yeah, so we won't be too far away. Okay. Um, but my question was, uh, I think when people think about distributed solar, they usually think about like solar panels up on rooftops mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but in, in so I'm curious in Santiago, where um, some of the areas are very like densely developed, mm -hmm. say you had like a really tall apartment building, um, what, how would you actually have to, how would you make that installation? Could you actually do a rooftop situation mm -hmm. or would you have to find some nearby undeveloped area? Uh, how, how would this work? Um, so I think this is something I would have to look into more, but I am assuming that there, there are opportunities for rooftop solar development on, on buildings in Santiago. I, that's one of the benefits, I think, of community solar in urban environments is that um, something that really constrains residential solar is that everyone doesn't have a roof. And so, um, yeah, I think using rooftops in, uh, in dense urban environments is a good way around um, having to find an undeveloped plot of land. Um, I, obviously not every roof is suitable for solar, um, so I think that would just be on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Yeah. And then there's also complications with um, like making sure that the building owner uh, is supportive of, yeah. of such a project. There's yeah, a lot of factors there. Yeah. Is that your whole yeah, question? Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you have time. Um, I'm just curious, uh, I mean, I know, get, definitely get how this makes sense in an urban space, but I'm wondering how applicable or feasible community solar would be in more rural areas. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just a matter of um, people having rooftops, but just like sharing the cost of investment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of these solar developments have happened, or these community solar developments mm -hmm. have happened in somewhat more rural environments, mm -hmm. and they're usually, um, those ones are usually on like, uh, kind of big plots of land mm -hmm. and um, yeah so your question is how it would work kind of socially or I guess both yeah one yeah one could that could um, yeah a, a, a solar panel be set up to like serve a community mm -hmm. um, as well as yeah socially like would help much likely how likely would people be to buy into it mm -hmm. um, yeah so it's kind of interesting so f first of all first Part of your question, yes, you could set up kind of a you could set up a microgrid with a solar panel mm -hmm. or with a solar installation, or you could, if the rural community was already connected to the grid, it could also be connected to the grid. Mm -hmm. um, and for the projects in the U.S., there's been a lot of variation and success in community buy-in. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they have kind of a local um, nonprofit who is running it, and they really work with the community members mm -hmm. and try to. Um, meet people face to face to explain it to them to get participation um, yeah it, it's been a lot of kind of nonprofits okay. working within the community mm -hmm. um, but that all that being said it all really depends on the on the return on investment yeah. that someone's gonna get and a lot of times that's not uh, you can't it's not super clear up front especially if your return on investment is directly related to how much energy is produced mm -hmm. from that system um, Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all so much. That was great. Uh,